Welcome to the Caregiven Podcast. I'm Inga. And I'm Julie. And long story short, we have Caregiven. We are two mom entrepreneurs who have built an in home care business from the ground up, guided every step of the way by God's care and fueled by agape love. Almost 14 years later, we felt called to create this podcast as a resource for families with caregiving needs. Whether you care for a family member or are looking for advice on professional caregiving, we want this to be a platform to support you. Each week, we will come to you with encouraging stories of families who have found the right balance for their loved ones, tips for how to care for them and you, and much more. We hope you continue to join us each week as we share in this exciting new journey together. Hello, Sunshines, and hello, Julie. Good morning. What's up? Oh, gosh, well, you know. I'm having a bad hair day, <laughs> and my hair knew it was podcast day. But it happens. It's, it's I, you know this rat nest. You know, there's not a darn thing I can do with it. Well, I'm so I'm excited because I have of my good news stories. It's actually not good news story necessarily. It's just some quotes, but it's gonna play into that bad hair day. Um, it, our general perceptions of ourselves. Oh, right on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. For those that don't watch this on YouTube, they don't know I have a bad hair day going on. <laughs> no. I know. Oh, goodness. I hear you. But it's not bad to me. It's only bad to you, I guess. <sighs> well, you know, when Alyssa gets me from this shot, you see all the, yeah. Yeah, I could go on and on, but I yes. won't. And the quality of the film that gets taken here is is kind of unforgiving. Unforgiving to our, our because it show, she's so damn good. She is really, really good. <laughs> she's so good at it's making me look bad. It's a blessing to have her uh, be so good at what she does. So. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. But I have some some food for thought on that. Right, oh. get a little further Right, away. oh, good news. So um, we're not talking about Cadillacs today. We're talking about cataracts. Yes, big difference. Very big difference. <laughs> have you ever had eye problems? You know, th- I remember one time that I had pink eye. Oof. And it was summertime, and I'll tell you what, it hurt. It hurt bad. Yeah. And right now, my husband is going through an eye ulcer, and Oof. he's going on a month. They had said it'd take two months. Oh, my gosh. To, he's been on, like, I don't know, steroids and six different eye things. It's just pretty like antibiotics disgusting. Antibiotics or something? Um, huh? An- antibiotics? Yeah, that too. But um, he did go to the doctor again just today, and they did say it was getting better. But we're a month in, and it was really scary because I didn't even think about – you take things for granted until they don't work, right? Mm-hmm. And what happened was he woke up one morning and he goes, I can't see out of my eye. And that scared the crap oh, yeah. out of me because I was like, oh my God, well, you still have to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Buster. Sorry, Buster. You're still- <laughs> no, um, but literally it had gotten to that point and he had been going back and forth, glasses, contacts, glasses. So we thought it was just something like that. Sure. You know, if you get, if you don't change your contacts, enough or whatever you know it it easily gets icky but this time it went big time dog bad and um yeah he actually (laughs) for quite some time he wore a a pirate um pirate an eye patch I called him a pirate (laughs) (laughs) but um that that bright light like last night he was saying you know if it's dark and I'm just sitting here watching tv I can see out of it but during the day I can't wow and so anyway I'm 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 worried we have to really really watch him and I and I have to be more diligent and say now how are your eyes today right are you wearing your contacts do they need to come out um just because if you don't have your sight you're really gonna have a new world oh for sure so did did they say what caused it or Mm -hmm. it just, it just can happen? Yeah. It just, it just can happen. Mm. And, um, but this time instead of just the normal, every occasional, you know, icky eye, it it was literally an eye ulcer. So that sounds anyway, he got on top of it as fast as he did, but it's still going to be, you know, two months in the process of getting it back to where it was. That's crazy. I think about like canker sores and aren't they just little like ulcers and how painful they are. I can't even imagine. Yeah. He said, you know, one of the medications. Oh my goodness. This is terrible. He has been having to put two different drops in every hour for the last three plus weeks. Oh my gosh. And you got to keep it cold and he works outside. So I'm, he's like, what am I going to do? And I said, take a Ziploc bag, stick some snow in it. <laughs> you 
<laughs> because he can't refrigerate it because right? he's on heavy equipment. Oh my gosh. And so anyway, there, you know, just even the logistics of stopping and doing something like that every hour, you got to remember to do it. But eye health, it's scary. Mm-hmm. And, and when I was thinking about topics, I'm like, oh, hey, we have a lot of caregivers, our clients, where our caregivers take them in and get cataract surgery. And I was like, I don't know th- what that means. So let's figure it out. Oh, I love it. I'm <laughs> glad that you did. Well, that uh, rolls us right into our verse, which uh-huh. is Matthew chapter five, verse eight. And it says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's a lot of Bible verses out there about sight yes. and seeing and Because we're talking about eyeballs today, that's where I went. It just fit. Well, that's awesome. I love it. Good verse. Well, why don't you tell me uh, about the blind hockey goalie? Oh, my goodness. Yes. So uh, for recreation league athletes, there's nothing worse than one of your teammates dropping out at the last minute. When a rec uh, league ice hockey team in Edmonton needed a goaltender, they got a save from an unlikely likely hero. Uh, Nelson is 100% blind, and by filling in as a goalie for an acquaintance team, he became the first ever blind player to play in a sighted team in the province's history. Um, so he plays blind ice hockey for the Edmonton Seahawks, and it's S-E-E Hawks, <laughs> And met another goaltender, John, inquiring online about gear modifications and a chest protector. Later, Hunter got injured and trying to help his team find a goalie for the league game. He reached out on the Edmonton Goalies Facebook page. This is low-level stuff, so beginners to welcomes pro. DM me if you're interested, and we'll get you set up. So, uh... Nelson calls me and he kind of starts out with, hey, how's the chest protector going? And by the way, I'm not sure if this is a good idea or not, but I saw your post for a goalie sub for the game tonight. What do you think about me playing? Uh, The team was all in. So Nelson strapped on his kit and got ready for his first ever sighted league match. According to the players, they didn't tell the referee till the puck dropped from that their goalie was blind information in which he really didn't want to do <laughs> um he's ad- evidently driven motorcycles and race cars since going blind explains he keeps himself centered in the goal by measuring the distance between the post with his stick and his glove after he uses sound to key in where the puck puck is and if it's challenged all the while following audio instructions from his loving wife Imelda in the stands relaying the action so his wife is out there hollering to him <laughs> and it's loud in a hockey game I just went to one a couple months ago. I couldn't believe the fans were just nuts. So anyway, um, the game was by no means a washout. And even though the team lost nine to eight, he hung in there and earned the respect and admiration of the team. They made no accommodations for me. It was just like being one of the guys on the team and the whole camaraderie thing that you get when the team, um, that's the thing that I really love the most. These are the the nights where legends are born. (laughs) Yeah, so it's um, what he said is I'd say just go for it. If there's something you want to do, just do it. Um, it's amazing watching hockey, but it's even better playing it. Oh, wow, that is impressive. Yes, incredible, isn't it? <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just found a few quotes um, that I wanted to share with our listeners about aging and beauty. And I was thinking about it a lot, how we tend to be awfully hard on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, We're not kind to ourselves. And especially in the world now where everything is more visible, you know, we're on social media, we're on, we're doing these podcasts and there are videos. And um, so it's, I don't know, I just thought about how we need to embrace who we are and love who we are more and not be so critical of ourselves because other people aren't. And then I stumbled across these aging and beauty quotes and I thought, "Eh, I think I'll share them. So this one says, my face carries all my memories. Why would I erase them? Oh, (laughs) and that was Diane von First. Um, I, this one was so funny. Uh, Rita Redner, she said, I don't plan to grow old gracefully. I plan to have facelifts until my ears meet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then Michelle Pfeiffer said, there is nothing more aging than misery. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. Uh, something pretty. That's just the surface. People worry so much about aging, but you look wo- younger if you don't worry about it. Right. And on. that was Jeannie Moreau. Mm. Um, and it said, my advice, don't waste so much time worrying about your skin or your weight. Develop what you put your hands on in the world. That was Meryl Streep. Ooh. Um, Henry Ford said, anyone who stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. Mm-hmm. Anyone who keeps learning stays young. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, wrinkles should merely indicate where the smiles have been. That was Mark Twain. 
And then uh, this was anonymous, and I'll I'll leave you with this. Time may be a great healer, but it's a lousy beautician. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway. Well, it's, it's really funny that I even talk about my hair because if you've ever seen any of my videos on Farm Mama Fitness, uh, it, it's just a tornado. <laughs> You're a tornado girl too. <laughs> yeah, that fashion, farm fashionista. <laughs> yes. Oh, so that's good. Those are really, yeah. really good. And I think people like... Um, pure and honest yeah. and real I think no oh, yeah I know I do I appreciate that yeah people tend to know that they can trust that person because they're all out there <laughs> they're like, yep this is me in all my glory <laughs> cool well uh, uh, listeners if you have any um, good news stories or verses that you would like for us to share please email those to the caregiven podcast at gmail.com today Julie we're going to be talking about cataracts yes, so we'll be talking not about cataracts <laughs> uh what is what is a cataract <laughs> cataract what is it? Um, who can get them? What are the types of cataracts? Uh, we'll talk a little bit about surgeries and then also myths and facts. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of information out there and um, a lot of website and um, websites that are available. So you just got to get on there and Google stuff and and go from there. Yeah. Interesting uh, that when it talks about early symptoms of cataracts, which we'll get into what they are, it says none. Mm. Nothing early. Mm. But your later symptoms, blurry vision, colors that seem to fade, sensitivity to light, trouble seeing at night, double vision. But anyway, what are cataracts? So a cataract is a cloudy area in the lens of your eye, and that's the clear part of the eye that helps to focus light. Um, cataracts are very common as you get older. In fact, more than half of all Americans age 80 or older either have them or have had surgery to get rid of them. Mm. So um, at first, you might not notice that you have a cataract, but over time, they can make your vision blurry, hazy, or less colorful, and you may have trouble reading or doing other everyday activities so over time cataracts can lead to vision loss mm. so that's something to be aware of the good news is that surgery can get rid of them oh yes yes that's a big deal mm -hmm. um cataract surgery is safe and corrects vision problems caused by cataracts mm -hmm. so hallelujah for one relatively easy thing yes that um, could be really really scary mm -hmm. uh, types of cataracts like you were saying um, they're mostly related to age they happen because of normal changes in your eyes as you get older but as you can get cataracts for other reasons like an eye injury or other surgery no matter what type of cataract you have you'll need surgery to treat it mm. yeah you can get them in actually in one or in both eyes but they cannot spread from one eye to the other mm. Yep. By age 80, most people either have them or have had the surgery. Mm -hmm. um, and it is actually one of the most common operations in the United States. You know, I, uh, I freak out about it because I, I've, I read, I have readers, mm -hmm. but, um, and I've gone in to just get my eyes just tested. But honestly, when somebody's coming at my eyeball, how do you not freak out mm -hmm. and like, pucker up buttercup have you ever had that like the puff of air that they okay so I only had it one time in my life and I didn't get a warning so I'm sitting there with my <laughs> eye on the thing and then all of a sudden like like a hurricane force wind flies at my eye oh right? goodness so then they have to do the second one mm -hmm. well now I know what's coming and <laughs> they're like keep your eye open okay there's no possible way so I'm trying to hold it open can you open your I mean do, I, I would have to do that I would mm -hmm. have to use my fingers to keep my eye holes open. Yes. And I don't know that that would help. Yeah. I'm, I'm, see, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not super sensitive to it in terms of like, like I've worn contacts before okay. and have no problem like touching my eye or whatever. Uh -huh. um, but the, you know, that fast air coming at you. <laughs> but I know that some people like Kevin, he cannot, like even the thought of it just oh. squirms him. Yeah. He's like, nope, no, thank you. Can't yeah. do it. Yeah, so I, I've been thinking about even getting a pedicure. I mean, <laughs> toes, eyes, I know it's completely different. <laughs> but I was just thinking about that. If somebody went to touch my feet, I would probably involuntarily just kick them in the head because that's where they're at. <laughs> Boom. Right. And, and my toes show it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I think the same thing with my eyeballs. Kevin Gross got, me out. He had a metal sliver in his eye once. Oh, no. And so he ended up in the ER and basically it was it was actually a really awkward moment because <laughs> there's the the ER doc that's like this close to him. Oh no. Like, <laughs> and trying to get in there and get it out. It was just crazy. Oh. But yeah. That's wild. Yeah. So that the, they just have to go get it. Right. You can't leave it there. And you have to be that close. Yes. Oh lordy. I would yeah. have actually 
like to watch that. That would have been really funny. <laughs> I think it was very awkward Knowing for Kevin. Kevin he's a got a levels. personal, air, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was very uh, intrusive of the personal space. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. So uh, symptoms of cataracts. Yes. Your vision is cloudy or blurry. Um, Colors start to look faded to you. You can't see well at night. Lamps, sunlight, or headlights seem to be too bright. Mm. Um, You also see halo around lights. You can see double. This sometimes goes away as the cataract actually gets bigger. And um, you have to change the prescription of your glasses or contact lenses often. Um, so basically if you have any of those symptoms that you're noticing on a regular basis, it's probably time to talk to an eye doctor, Mm -hmm. um, just to confirm whether or not you have something weird going on. Right, right. Am I at risk for cataracts? Mm -hmm. Um, basically as you get older, as we keep (laughs) saying, it, uh, it just circles back to that. You're also at higher risk if you have certain health problems like diabetes, Mm -hmm. you smoke, uh, drink too much alcohol, have a family history of cataracts. I've got to ask my mom about mm-hmm. that. My mom had the surgery. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Have had an eye injury, eye surgery, or radiation treatment on your upper body. Have spent a lot of time in the sun. You take steroids, which are medicines used to treat some health problems like arthritis or allergies. Mm-hmm. If you're worried you might be at risk at cataracts, talk to your doctor. Um, see if there's anything that you can do to lower your mm-hmm. risk. And I, I've noticed... Um, when I was younger, my mother was like, wear a hat, wear a hat, wear a hat, because she's always worried about your mm-hmm. skin, you know. Um, and I, I always, it took me a long time to wear my hat. Thank <laughs> you, Cheryl. I got it. And then, but also sunglasses. I was never a big fan. But nowadays, the gaudier, the uglier, the wilder <laughs> colors, the better. Nice. And that, I, I've noticed that I really actually need them now. Mm-hmm. That's a struggle for me. Uh I have to get either like prescription sunglasses or um, some frames come with like some that you can snap over them. Oh yeah. It's they're, they're not great. Yeah. I mean, they just aren't, but it's better than nothing. Righto. Yeah. Yeah. So what causes cataracts? Most cataracts happen because of normal changes in in your eyes as you get older. Um, When you're young, your lens in your eye is clear. Around 40, the proteins in the lens of your eye start to break down and clump together. And that clump makes a cloudy area on your lens known as the cataract. So over time, the cataract gets worse and makes more of a cloudy lens. Um, A cataract is a cloudy area in the lens of your eye. And they can make, I've said this a million times, but like blurry vision, hazy vision, less color. And, um, essentially, I mean, the takeaway from that is that most times cataracts happen just because of natural changes in your eyes. And again, there is a surgery option to take care of it. So, well, and every time we say the things that it, it happened, the mm-hmm. uh, ver- vision blurry, I'm just mm-hmm. like, okay, <laughs> Check my eyes. Am I blurry or is it just, you know, my day? <laughs> right. I'm hazy or oh, less yeah. colorful. When I get, when I'm on the computer, like working on spreadsheets or a lot of number things, uh-huh. I will like come away from it and just literally yeah. have to blink really, really hard, roll my eyes around in my head oh. and try to refocus, you know? It's, it's it, obviously, it's it weird. We, we can tell in each other if we've had a real <laughs> thinky day <laughs> yes. with a lot of whatever Numbers, graphs, not mean numbers, but yeah, schedule. Just, yeah, schedules. <laughs> um, and it, you can just see it in your eyes. You're like, oh, it's, it's time to quit. <laughs> it's been a day. Yes. Yes. So how do these cataracts form? They form when the proteins in the lens of your eyes clump together, making the lens cloudy. It all comes back to that very same thing. The lens of your eye is normally clear, letting light pass through, and it helps focus the light onto your retina, which is the light sensitive layer of tissue in the back of your eye. So you can think, see things clearly. Cataracts keep you from uh, seeing clearly because the light isn't easily passed through the clumps of protein in your lens. Over time, the clumps of protein get bigger and thicker, making it harder for you to see. Your lens may also turn yellow or brown, which can change how you see colors. So basically, we've talked about what causes them. Mm-hmm. And so prevention. Um, you can take some steps to prevent your eyes from cataracts and protecting your eyes from the sun. Wear sunglasses and a hat. So turns out Cheryl did know what she was talking uh, about. Yes, as I find out as more mothers, and more and more. Did I tell you that Bailey sent me a meme that basically said something to the effect of, turns out my mom was right all along. I just didn't like her tone. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to protect your eyes from injury. So basically when you're doing activities like using power tools, playing certain sports, you should wear protective eyewear, um, to keep them from getting accidentally injured. Mm. Um, quitting smoking if you are a smoker and also those darned old food oh, choices. So kidding. eat plenty of healthy foods, uh, <laughs> 
apparently fruits, vegetables, leafy greens, nuts, whole grains, they're good for your eyeballs. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So when to check with the doctor? An eye doctor can check for cataracts as part of the diluted, um, dilated. They don't want to dilute. They <laughs> want to dilate. The eye exam. Um, if you're age 60 or older, get a dilated eye exam every one to two years. Mm -hmm. The exam is simple and painless. Your doctor will give you some eye drops to dilate, which is widen the pupil, and then check your eyes for cataracts and other eye problems. So it's not painful, but have you ever had the numbing drops that actually sting really bad? Mm -mm. Yeah. Again, yeah, I don't know how I get the you're, ever get the second eye done because it goes in the first one. I'm like, you're oh, that really was... making me want to go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, well, it's just like Novocaine, right? Oh. They give you a little uh, before you get a Novocaine shot. They give you a little <sighs> numbing something or other, and they would well, just be a little pinch. And um, <laughs> I think the numbing agent actually. I don't know. It, it seems to hurt worse, can, but maybe that's because I'm numb by the time the Novocaine gets right there. Oh, can you, um, after that's done, does it, t it takes a while to wear off the Novocaine? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, but can you see, Oh wait, no, we're talking about two different things. I'm talking about like teeth with Novocaine, but oh. yeah, but the, the drops in your eyes, sorry, I, I pff, rabbit hole down. <laughs> so, um, yes, you can see, I never stopped being able to see. It it's, wasn't cloudy or anything. No, okay. no, they, and I don't know if my if the numbing stuff is basically to oh, to be able to like poke on them. What'd you break? <laughs> I just broke my pretty bracelet. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, the beads are everywhere. Oh, darn it. Anyway, hmm. I'm things sorry. that happen in real life. Shucks. <laughs> um. Anyway, the drops that go in like the numbing things. I think it's so that they can actually like touch around on your eye and just check the eye oh, health and everything. But yeah, yeah it uh, stings in the beginning. So forget it. Drop goes in. I squint my eye up you know cry a little because <laughs> it makes my eyes water and yeah. then all is good and then within I mean it's I don't know it wears off very quickly yeah yeah and I never stop being able to see okay so. okay okay yeah great okay so treatments for cataracts surgery is the only way to get rid of cataracts um, but you may not be able to get to surgery right away. So a home treatment, early on, you may be able to make small changes to manage the cataracts. Use brighter lights at work or home. Wear anti-glare sunglasses. Use magnifying lenses for reading and other activities. Mm. Get new glasses or contacts. Uh, and uh, then the surgery, uh, if they're starting to get in the way of your everyday life like reading, driving, watching TV, that's when it's time. Mm -hmm. I guess just like everything else, you've tolerated it until you can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so basically when you're contemplating or thinking about that cataract surgery, you want to talk to your um, doctor about the options and you don't necessarily have to rush right into it, right? Because yeah. there are things that you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, it usually waiting to have that surgery isn't going to harm your, your eyes or make the surgery more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but it does say to use the tips of telling your doctor if the cataracts are getting in the way of your everyday activities, mm -hmm. um, seeing your doctor for regular checkups, asking your doctor about the benefits and the risks of the cataract surgery. And then also... Um, encouraging your family members to look into it just because they can run in families. So mm. basically just talk to your people. Right, right. Yeah. So um, the types of cataracts, we kind of touched on that was the age-related. The traumatic is um, when you had an eye injury. And I'll tell you what, the other day I went to close this window that's right over here, mm -hmm. and I went to just swing the thing, and oh. it popped me right in the oh. eye. I mean... And you don't even know stuff like that's going to happen until it happens, yeah, right? Yeah. And so I sat down here and cried like a baby for a while. <laughs> and then none of the rest of you were here, so it was okay. <laughs> I just told on myself. But anyway, that, you know, I'm just thinking of eye injuries. Well, shoot, they happen mm -hmm. so quickly and it just drops you. <laughs> um, <laughs> you wouldn't think you'd need like protective uh, goggles to yeah, close the blinds. I close but... the blind. I wear the goggles. <laughs> uh, radiation um, can cause cataracts. Mm. This includes ultraviolet violet from the sun and for like treatment for cancers and such mm -hmm. and what i didn't know is there's a pediatric contact con cataract <laughs> um, and so it says children can get cataracts too they can be born with them or develop them later on they're very rare mm -hmm. and they're usually genetic meaning that they run in the families um, they can also happen because of serious problem during pregnancy or use of or because of illnesses during childhood um and so they need treatment right away because sure. they're little guys. Yeah. Um, and then secondary cataracts. Um, after cataract surgery, it's possible to develop scar tissue in the eye, which can make your vision cloudy again. This is called a secondary cataract. Um, so one 
uh, up to two out of five people will have cataract surgery will develop that secondary. Mm. So gets worse before it gets better. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> uh, the treatment um, is thankfully quick and painless. Their eye doctor will use a laser to make an opening in the cloudy part of the lens. And they'll notice their vision is back with in normal in a couple of days. Mm. Well, good. Gee, yuck. Are you kidding? So you go to get fixed and then you get a problem, but there's a fix for the problem that you went to get fixed for. Well, at least they fix the problem so they can (laughs) fix the problem. Yes, perfect. (laughs) We have some really good show notes. um, And one of them is a guide to cataract surgery. Mm -hmm. It gets a little more in depth into what we were talking about Mm because it talks about the layers of the eyeball. Mm -hmm. Um, And the other thing that we wanted to talk about and just kind of summarize is the facts and myths about cataracts. So let's see. What is the first myth? Only older Americans develop cataracts. The fact is that while cataracts affect more than 24 million Americans ages 40 and older, they can occur among younger adults and children. Right. Yep. Okay. And we've talked about the risk factors, so you know all of those. Already. So here's the myth. The best time to have cataract surgery done is, if, is when it is first diagnosed. Fact is that cataract removal is an elective surgery, which means it's the patient's choice to um, when to undergo the procedure. So most people need the surgery when it causes enough vision loss to interfere with work, play, or other day-to-day tasks such as driving. Mm-hmm. But cataract surgery may also be done if the cataract is preventing treatment for another eye disease. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Okay, myth. Taking aspirin can prevent a cataract. Oh, well, then I'm in good shape. (laughs) Um, But the fact is, there are not enough facts or evidence to say whether aspirin aspirin prevents cataract. Um, Aspirin in large doses can be harmful unless your doctor prescribes it for an ailment. It's best to avoid taking this medication on a regular basis. (laughs) Rutro. Myth. Lasers are used to remove cataracts. The fact is that in cataract treatment, the clouded lens is removed by a trained surgeon and then replaced with an artificial lens implant. The most common procedure that I cannot pronounce Mm -hmm. uh, requires a smaller incision in the cornea or less um, commonly the sclera. The surgeon uses sound waves, an ultrasonic device to break the lens into small pieces and then suctions the tiny pieces out through the same incision. And next, the doctor will insert the lens into the capsular bag Um, which is the original location of the lens. So cataract surgery is usually conducted as an outpatient procedure. Sometimes after this procedure, the capsulary bag that remains in your eye can become cloudy. Um, That's called an after, what we just talked about. So that thankfully can um, get cleared up pretty quickly. Mm. Mm -mm. Another myth, cataracts can be treated with eye drops. Fact is, surgery is the only proven treatment for a cataract. Cataract cannot be treated with medicines, and at this time, there's no FDA-approved medicine for cataract, although this is an active area of research. Okay, uh, cataract surgery is dangerous. Fact is, cataract surgery is a delicate operation, yet it is one of the safest operations done today. More than 98% of surgeries are successful. Fewer than 2% of cases have complications such as, such as inflammation, bleeding, infection, or retinal detachment. Mm. Um, it can take months to recover from cataract surgery. In most cases, cases, patients often can see well enough to begin normal activities a few days after having cataract surgery. Your vision will continue to improve over the following weeks and months. However, if you have additional eye pro- problems, such as glaucoma, it might take longer. Mm. And the last myth, taking vitamin E or vitamin C can prevent a cataract. Fact is, some research centers are studying the link between these vitamins and cataract prevention. However, there has not been proven evidence for the link. It may be possible a diet high in fruit and vegetables containing vitamin C, E, and A, and multivitamin mineral supplements could be protective against cataracts. Uh Uh-huh. So like everything else in the world, stand by because somebody's working on it to make good medicine even better. Yeah. I don't even understand. They cut in, (laughs) they do something, they break. It's like they take a vacuum. It is just weird. Every topic that we do, I'm like, who figured this out? I know. Here, you have a white thing in your eye. Let me dig at it. Let me surgery it. it. Yeah. That's wild. I have seriously considered um, the... LASIK surgery? Yes. Yes. I think my challenge is that my eyesight hasn't stabilized, Mm -hmm. and it has to be stable for... A, a fair amount of time before you just rush in there and get surgeried. So, oh, but I'm hoping every time I go back to the eye doctor and it's actually worse, I'm hopeful that it that my prescription changed because it's better. Uh huh. Yeah, it's not the case. 
It's always been worse. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> but it's not getting as drastically worse, so that's good. Oh, wow. Maybe I'm starting to get to that plateau. Righto, righto. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Well, there you go. That's about cataracts, not Cadillacs. <laughs> nice. Well, what'd you bring for a grandma story? Oh, so this is some words of wisdom um, that say, shake the hand before you plow the field. <laughs> it said, um, being shafted on the job has been around for a long time. <laughs> this old saying indicates it's best to agree upon a price for the job and get a down payment beforehand, if at all possible. It also went goes for the people hiring for a job. It's just as important for them to have an agreed upon price before the work was done so that they were protected as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it says um, that that's just it, is you just basically need to agree on something prior to doing the work. Yeah. Prior yeah, to that I planning. think can tend to get, get people into trouble, huh? Yeah. Clear yes. communication is a, is a good thing. Yeah, shake <laughs> the hand before you plow the field. Isn't that funny? <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, um, if you have not yet subscribed, please do that. You can do it on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you get your podcasts. You can go and watch us on YouTube. And please um, go and join our Apago Care and Share Facebook group. I think that's it. So peace out, Girl Scouts. Oh, my goodness. Have a good day.